Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this one, as part of the teardown video we did on the Polo engine, well, this is the cylinder head. Uh, we're going to talk about the cylinder head, all the different components of it, what the purpose of it, what it is, kind of how it works, and then we're going to do a quick little strip down, take the valves out, show you the different components internally of the engine, and show you usually how they're rebuilt. So first up. This is a cylinder head of the 1.2 litre BMD engine from the, I think it's about 2002-ish Polo to 2007 or 8. Um, essentially what a cylinder head does is it seals off the combustion chamber right at the top. It sits directly above them, the piston comes below it. And the other use of it is for the inlet and exhaust valves. They are the valves that are opened by the camshaft, spinning around with the lobes, which is this one here. So when the camshaft sits in top of the cylinder head, it spins round, turned by the crankshaft chain. And these lobes, I'll show you like that. They have a nose on them, on the front. So as it turns round, that nose pushes down on what is called a rocker arm which then pushes open the valve and then as soon as it comes off that nose section it will close the valve back up, it will reseat it. So you have two sets of ports on it, you have the three intake ports, this is where the air comes in through the air box, through the intake manifold, if you've got a turbo it will come through a turbo beforehand as well and then it will go into here. Just inside each port is the back end of, a, the, back end of the valve head which I'll show you in, in a short while and the air will rush past that when the valve opens and then into the combustion chamber and then will be stopped when that valve comes back up. On the other side is basically the opposite and you've got the three exhaust ports one per cylinder as well. When the exhaust valve opens after the fourth stroke, the, the uh, exhaust stroke, it'll force the exhaust out through that valve opening gap out through these ports and then we'll go into the exhaust system, catalytic converter, exhaust manifold etc. These studs here are just to, to hold the exhaust manifold on. A bit of a chair for going past. Um, up at the top, these three holes here are where the spark plug sits in because they have to be directly into the combustion chamber as well for the spark to kind of ignite the fuel air mixture. In the top here, you can see the rocker arms. These are roller rocker arms. So it has essentially a roller in the middle of it. And that is just to try and reduce the wear that happens when the camshaft is spinning against it. It basically makes the engine run smoother, less noise, everything like that. This is one of those roller rocker arms. You have this side, if I can get one out. This is an automatic hydraulic adjuster. This sits on this side here. And so essentially when the engine is running and the oil pressure is increased, it will feed oil pressure into here through this hole on the side, then up through the top here. This, if it's got pressure on it, will stop the oil coming out and then we'll then put hydraulic pressure inside the lifter, which will then hold it solid. So when, so you won't have to mess around with kind of valve adjustments and everything like that, which is quite a nice handy thing to do. Then you've got the roller section for where the camshaft actually sits onto it, on the lobe. And on this side, it sits directly on top of the valve stem, which sits on here. So if that's solid, the camshaft spins around and will push down and then it comes back up again to reseat this, the uh, valve. Set it off to the side. Underneath, these are the three cylinder chamber sections. Each has this hole for the spark plug, which is right here. So you'll see the little tip of the spark plug poking through here with a little electrode. And then you have on this two valves per cylinder, one intake and one exhaust valves. So what we're going to do now is take a valve out and then I'll show you the assembly 
and what is going on inside here because it's quite dark and a bit awkward. So we've got a few to see outside of the cylinder head. So first of all, we're going to use our valve spring compressor. Essentially what this does is take the tension out of the spring. You can then remove the little clips that hold the retainer on for the spring. And in order to do that, I've pre-adjusted this so it will just about fit on. Underneath, you'll see this piece on the bottom of the valve. Because otherwise, as soon as you put any pressure on that side, it'll just open the valve rather than actually compress the spring. And the other side will sit on top of the retainer around the valve stem. So now that's closed, we then start. And if I can then bring it back up. I'm going to keep the top surface a scrape uh, and clean down. I've done the bottom end as well. Uh, this is just a bit of oil from the table, but otherwise it is. A lot cleaner than it was. I've gone through the combustion ports as well. Give those a clean up and try to get rid of as much of the coking up as possible. Uh, so there's no hot spots that are created which could cause problems. Um, next up, we're going to refit some new valve stem seals. This is all they are. Just a metal ring around it that holds it nice and solid. And then inside is just a rubber coating which grips onto the guides and then also surrounds the valve stem to create that kind of blockage for the oil coming through. So quite fit, simply the fitting of them is the easiest part of all. You just get them, fit them over the guide and then push them on. They have seated fairly well but what I will do is just get one of these in a second, sit it on the top and to give it a whack. That will then fully seat it down onto the guide and we should have no problems with that in the future. So we'll try that with this. There is once again a special tool but That is now fully seated, but just to give it another one, just to be double sure. Yeah, we're all good on that one. So now with all the valve stem seals refitted and seated, we're going to start putting all the valves back in. Uh, it's pretty much the opposite of how we kind of took them out in the first place. So what we're going to do to start off with is take our intake valve, which is the bigger valve of the two, for cylinder number one. Slide it up through and push it through the stem seal there. And it's lovely, it's a good tight fit around there, which is always nice. We then take our spring and our retainer and seat them over the top. Getting our tool again, we're going to place this on top of the retainer and then on the bottom of the valve, clamp it back down. Once we've done that, we can start trying to fit our little retaining clips here, which can be a bit awkward. So sometimes using a magnet just to get them in there is helpful. one seated. Let's try the other.
I don't know why you keep asking where if I'm filming while I'm filming. So now having got both of the little retaining clips in there, just to make sure they are fully seated before I retract it all the way back, I'm gonna do the screw and just check rather than snapping it off quickly and risking it all falling apart again. Luckily, that's all seated properly. And the series going off as well, apparently, in the background. So that's one done now. We'll do the exact same thing to the other five. And that'll be essentially the head rebuilt to the standard that we want anyway. Sometimes when rebuilding, what they'll do is they will cut a new face onto where the valve actually seats. They may bore them out, cut them out. They may port, as they call porting, the ports in taking exhaust for better flow, more smooth flow, getting rid of rough edges, everything like that. So now we've got the cylinder head all done up, uh, giving it a clean over uh, all the surfaces new valve the, the valves are back in they've been cleaned up and I've tried to remove as much of the carbon build up as possible new valves and seals I've then refitted uh, all of the rocker arms all to adjust as everything like that so now this is ready to go back onto the car but with the rest of the engine once we've done we'll put all that back together thank you very much for watching uh, we're gonna do another one with clutch next time and then after that we'll be going back to a time lapse of the engine going back together.